Yeah, coming up live on Live Wire, we've got a great show for you today. If, if you really want to go out and have a really good time and uh, do some good in the community for some community service organizations who are going to be on the program today, watch this program. If not, go on a radio or something. But you'll like this because these are really kind of wonderful services that are provided for people in need in our community and we can go and have some fun and take part in them. So stay tuned for Livewire right after this. Project Hero, and with me in the studio is David Ute, who is, are you are the chief cook and bottle washer of <laughs> this version of it, the Sacramento version. And before the program, we talked about how it got started in Sacramento. Uh, and uh, uh, could you just tell me a little that re let's let's go back and tell me that that opening story, how how you actually um, became part of it. Sounds good. It, we. Uh... In 2012, it first came to the Sacramento area, and because I'm an avid cyclist and I have a family of vets, mm -hmm. um, some that have suffered through Vietnam and many other wars, mm. uh, I wanted to do something to give back, and it was a good way for me to raise some money to help a good veterans organization that definitely was working on solving the PTSD issue. Uh -huh. And that's how I got started in 2012. Since then, I've become the chairman of the committee, and uh, since then, we've raised multi-hundred thousand dollars. Buku dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's very important. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, that money goes to buy Cadillacs for me? Well, it could if you were a veteran and it had pedals. Okay. But, <laughs> I uh, get it. So this is for bikes for uh, veterans and also for a program that serves them, right? That's correct. So the Honor Ride, which is coming up at April 27th and yeah. 28th, that's what we do. It's a one-day ride, but we have a festival the day before, which mm. is a lot of fun. Um, but it's a one-day ride, and that's to really get vets out in the community, uh, understanding exactly what's going on with vets, and participate with them and enjoy the day because it's usually an awesome day of riding. That's good. You know, and I, uh, we also, when we spoke before, you talked about the, that there's different, there are longer rides and longer rides for those folks who can do that, and uh, that helps still raise more money. That's correct. And we have rides of 15 miles, 45 miles, and also 65 miles. 65 miles. They get progressively more difficult as they get longer. But we want everybody to be able to come out and have an opportunity to participate and, and enjoy the time with some of the vets that really, about half our riders are vets. But this is a national uh, non nonprofit part of, uh, I mean, there are Project Hero uh, rides, uh, honor rides in other parts of the state and in the world? That's correct. We have, uh, we're the only one in Northern California, mm -hmm. but there are, there are 15 or 16 across the country. They just had one in Florida. And then, they, and then what we do is we help the vets get ready for a multi-day ride, which will be anywhere from four to seven days. Wow. And there are six or seven of those in the... And in I the, said a good part of that uh, therapy is also is talking with, you know, one of the issues with PTSD is so they say that you don't understand. You weren't there. You don't know what happened. And that's, and that's a very true story. What we get, though, and maybe starting with the history of, of Project Hero, it started mm -hmm. out as called Ride to Recovery. In 2008, there were 14 vets being uh, taken care of by a physical therapist, and she was trying to get through to them and get them healthy again, mm -hmm. not, only, not only physically but mentally. Well, she called John Worden, who's a, who's a, a pro-level coach, and he developed a training program for them. And the camaraderie that occurred from there mm. set the tone for what was to become Ride to Recovery, which morphed into Project Hero. I see. Okay, well, you know, I got good things kind of, they stumbled into existence like that. And I like this, uh, the, this kind of thing and uh, uh, Project Hero. We have some slides from, I guess, last year's uh, show. And let's see if we can have a look at those slides. And maybe you can be the narrator. Okay. I'm not sure that there's... There's a, they'll open, keep the mics open. So don't use any, there we go. 
Well, that's when we were introducing the event uh, right before the uh, national anthem. And we had veterans on Harleys that led all of our cyclists out of there. And we had a little over 350 riders last year. Wow, 350. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Those are two types of bikes that uh, we do. There are a lot of riders that are not able to ride a, uh, what we call a standard bike. Mm -hmm. So they ride a recumbent because it allows them to be more comfortable and still be able to participate. They might have uh, less use of their legs or arms. And we, can, we actually build a lot of adaptive bikes for them. I see. Okay, 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 that's great. We actually have a, and it's not in this picture, but we actually uh, have built bikes for people that have lost all of their limbs. And they ride a bike like you and I would ride a bike, uh -huh. but you'd never know unless you were right up next to them. Wow. Pretty awesome people. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, you know, with the will, that if they have the will to do that, they probably could do that. That's yes, sir. Really amazing stuff. So, um, are you a vet? I am not, but I have a family full of vets. Uh, my son was in the Air Force, and oh. I have all throughout my family. My dad flew Hellcats off carriers in World War II. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you know, and uh, World War II vets, they, they came home, they were told, um, it's over, forget about it. Yeah. Well, a lot of them suffered from that. Yes, they did. And yeah. uh, well, sometimes it takes years for it to show itself. Yeah. It absolutely is. So um, Project Hero, if uh, people want to get information, you just you just Google the words Project Hero. Right, or go to projecthero.org, uh -huh. and uh, the whole website will lead them to where they want to go. If they would like to participate, either volunteer or ride in the, uh, in the, in the Greater Sacramento area on uh -huh. a ride, they can hit the events, find Greater Sacramento on a ride, and either sign up or volunteer. So we, uh, we got about a month, we're a little over a month out. Yep to that event. Oh, look there, 6.45 a.m. rider check-in on April 28th, right. wow. So the ride begins at eight and that's for all routes. They all get let out. We also, Rockland PD will also be out there to, to lead us out mm -hmm. and uh, it all starts at the Placer County Association of Realtors. Uh, and where is that? That's uh, in Rockland uh -huh. uh, on Technology Drive just off 65 and Sunset. Wow, that is really great. So um, the uh, start to finish will be is the same place it will go yes, in a circle so you come back correct all three routes are circular and they all oh, they start are. and finish oh, okay. at the same yeah. same spot yeah i i thought about that when we were talking about the long rides i was thinking whoa you mean someone's going to have to drive out there and pick the rider up and a bicycle well we have had that and we have four vehicles that are constantly on the course searching for people that might have had a flat tire oh. or need assistance in some way or need to be brought back well this is great yeah. so uh, how many people did you say? I was just I was stunned at the picture, you know, of, uh, you say. Uh, Last year was about 350. This year we're expecting between five and 700. Okay, okay. Wow, well, an amazing experience for people. Well, it's a lot know, of fun uh, for sure. Yeah. To, uh, how do you think we're doing in the fight to deal with the returning, uh, returning vets? I think that uh, we have a lot of challenges. Uh, as been out in the news, over 20 vets a day are committing suicide due to PTSD. And I think it's, I think it's a responsibility of us who, uh, who are here and enjoying our life because those people are amazing individuals that put their mm -hmm. lives on the line to ensure our freedom. And I think it's something incumbent upon us in order to be able to give back to them. And for me, it's just this little way to do that. Yeah. You are, come from a family of vets, uh, you said, and, uh, and uh, you have a sense of what that means. Um, <clears throat> um, and some vets uh, come back to a family who don't know what that means. They think daddy went away, daddy's back now. Right, and, it, and unfortunately PTSD not only impacts the veteran, it impacts their family and friends and others as well. Yeah. And Project Hero, as it has morphed and gotten and, and grown throughout the years, we're also serving the families and loved ones as well and help them with PTSD counseling. Uh, PTSD counseling, because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of denial too. Mm -hmm. Many of my friends who came back from uh, Viet Vietnam and and mm -hmm. those from my period, they would say, "Oh no, I'm going to be fine. I'm, no, no, no problem." Right. <laughs> and then ten years later, it hits them, and they don't know what it is. That's right. That's right. Sorry. So, at any rate, good. Uh, let me ask you this. Sure. This is an ongoing event. Every year you do this ride and it changes and grows. Mm -hmm. now, there are other things that you do that are um, singular in, in a, uh, like a, other programming uh, issues like how to build a bike. Um, That's a great question. So 
in a many communities across the country, Sacramento being one of them, we have mm -hmm. what are called hubs. And that's where we actually train the vets. Through that, as, as the vets come in, they might need their bikes adapted, so we'll build bikes for them. They might need, um, all the vets need their bikes fitted to them. Some of them don't even have bikes, so we get bikes in the program. And as a matter of fact, Sacramento Bike Hikers last year stepped up to the plate with Roseville Cyclery and donated two bikes in order to, to get two vets that couldn't afford a bike on the bike. Good. And now they're participating in the program, and it's and it's then, then uh, you talked about camaraderie. Uh, mm -hmm. that, I like that word um, because, you know, um, they know who they're with. They're with people who have had similar experiences. At least they that's think correct. that. Uh, and that's it's at least an opening to, you know, moving in time in the future with somebody who has these uh, emotional barriers and things. How do you how do you deal with that? I mean, how do you assess the severity of PTSD uh, from a bicycle seat? I'm, I'm wondering. <laughs> because there are trainers that run the hub that actually train our vets I are see. vets. I see. And uh, they spend the time in order to not only understand what's maybe happened to them, because many of the hub coordinators uh, have PTSD themselves. In fact, you mentioned something. How do you know? And it goes on. How's it, how's it on go on going? One of our vets, who was a leader, um, he was doing great. He came out of his house, he was in his house for two years, blinds down. He came back through cycling, through ride to recovery, was doing great, and then he relapsed. relapsed. And now he's coming back again. And that happens a lot. So it's, it's an ongoing basis that we're doing counseling. So the more that we can create the camaraderie and be, have the vets be around those that have gone through what they've gone through, and then also get better condition through cycling, and it really helps them in the long run. Wow. David Ute, I think you're one of our heroes. Thanks so much well, for talking you. to me. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just a server. No. <laughs> yeah, so somebody has to be the leader, and that's a tough job. Well, thank you. I, right. I appreciate it, and Project Hero appreciates and it. And I wish you well on this ride with Project Hero. All right? Thank you. Good. All right, we're going to take a short pause for the cause, and we'll be back after this series of public uh, service announcements. Uh, and we'll be back to talk about some other wonderful things that you can do in your community or nearby right after this. I tell people I have three kids. One of them's adopted. I just don't know which one. I can't imagine having to be in a birth mother's position to make that choice. You know, I was kind of just asking her, you know, what is your motivation? Why are you doing this? And she looked at me and she said, because you can give my son a life that, that I could not. We always tell her, thank you. He is such a blessing to us. Every day is just a ray of sunshine from him. So. We're Chanda and Brian, and we chose adoption. Nearly half of children with autism wander away from safe places such as their home or school. If you ever see a child walking alone, remember the three S's. Stop to help, seek assistance from police, stay until they arrive. If a child with autism is missing, immediately search places that pose the most danger, such as nearby water and busy streets. To learn more, visit missingkids.com aware. Oh, we're back with Live Wire. I'm Mary Tatter, and with me in the studio is Mary Best, Mary Tess. Yes, that's very creative, Mary Tess Mayall, who is the program coordinator for something called Blue Line. Yes, Blue Line Arts. Yeah. Now that's in Roseville. It is. We're in downtown Roseville. It's a kind of a Roseville. service center for arts. We are a nonprofit arts organization mm -hmm. um, that has a gallery space, yeah. and we also teach um, art education classes. Mm -hmm as well as um, host events there, so. So yeah. that's good. It is. And one of the projects that you're doing is kind of fun. It's coming mm -hmm. up. That's why I said all that about coming up. Yes. You're gonna like it. Is uh, there's two things. There's a, a, a camp, uh, a spring break camp. Yes, we have a spring break camp. Listen up, uh, mothers and fathers. Yes, we have a spring break camp coming up March 28th, 29th, and 30th. Uh -huh. 
for teenagers, 13 to 18 year olds. It's going to be from 10 to 3 p.m. all three days. Uh -huh. And we have a great instructor for it. His name is Cody Martin, mm -hmm. of Cody Martin Films. Um, he's filmed a couple of uh, movies here in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And he's going to have bring all of his professional equipment, his lighting, mm -hmm. everything. Um, we also have five Mac computers um, in the education gallery, too, that the Show teenager... people how to edit? Yes. Oh, we have the full good. editing software, um, iMovie and Adobe Premiere for um, oh, wow. yeah, the students yeah, to use. And kids will pick all that up and they'll go out and become Steven Spielberg all over again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope something, good, something comes out of it. You know, um, we communicate more and more with video and, um, and pictures, yes. which is really good because it's... Uh, it adds another dimension to our understanding of, of each other, man. Yeah, video <laughs> content is very popular online too. It's a great way to share your story. It is, it is, it is. So um, now uh, to raise funds for Blue Line, yes, uh, you're gonna have a lottery for the arts. Lottery for the arts, our 10th annual. Uh -huh. Yes, That's very good. exciting. Um, so our whole gallery space right now is full of art that has been donated by local artists. Uh -huh. Um, I believe we have at least 85 pieces of um, amazing work. And um, the preview for that show is actually this Saturday from 5 to 8.30 p.m. So you can come and see the art first? Yes, you can Ooh. come and see the art that you would like to bring home with you, you at the end of the evening. Buy. You can actually go and look at it. Yes, and... you can even write down your favorite numbers. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then what you do is you go and you bid, uh, you, you, uh, you bid on this. Uh, yeah, so um, everyone who goes to the event yeah. receives a lottery ticket, and that lottery ticket will go into a lottery wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, one of those Number official... 38, that's me! Ah. Well, actually, we call out their name. Oh, they call out their name. Yes, oh. and then once someone's name is called, then they will yell out their favorite number, and then oh, that art great. will be theirs. Wow. Oh. Yeah. I, uh, I love art. I collect it myself. You do? Yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. I have a huge collection of Great. art. And um, you know, I go, I bid at auctions and things like that. And it's really, they're much fun. Yes. So, uh, and and uh, you go and basically what you said, it's like a lottery. Yeah. You go and you bid, but you're bidding against the last bidder. <laughs> well, actually, we do have a lottery, or actually an auction part at the oh. very beginning. You do. We bid off the first three tickets. Okay. So if someone wants to be the first pick, if there's a work of oh. art that you have to have, then you can be the highest bidder and oh. take that That's work home like with you. That's a lot of fun too. So, yeah. So good. And um, they get to take that home and, uh, and then go on their merry way collecting that artist because I'm sure that artists uh, donated that for that very purpose. Yes. And the artist donors will be there as well. Oh yeah. So you're great to talk to the artists. Yes. That's good, good, good. I like that mm -hmm. part. All the support art education. So all of those are at 405 Vernon Avenue in beautiful downtown. Vernon Street. Rose. Yeah. Vernon Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vernon Street in downtown. I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. right next to the Tower Theater. Oh, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, which is a nice place to go to look. I mean, and that area is beautiful to walk around. They're pretty homes just uh, a few blocks away. And Yeah, great restaurants yes. and bars. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and bars. <laughs> 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 so how did you get into this, uh, this line of business? I mean, not yeah. everybody that says, I think I'll be an artist manager or, or, or a... Yes, well, I actually majored in art at Fresno State. Uh. Um, but then I worked as a nanny for five years. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But um, I um, had an internship at Blue Line Arts and was fortunate enough to have that turn into a job afterwards. I see. So I've been there for almost a year now. Wow. At Blue Line Arts, and I good love ex it. Good experience. Uh, you know, internships are good. I had an internship with the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Wow. And I knew that I did not want to go and be a television producer. Oh, and I knew I didn't want to be a film producer. That's even crazier work. Five years of your life on one film. I mean, it's... Yeah. Uh, so like I couldn't do that. But, you know, here I am on TV. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. Um, it is. You know, yeah. in a way. And mm -hmm. Blue Line Arts is, uh, they've been around for a few years now. Oh, actually, they've been around for over 50 years. It wasn't called Blue Line before No, that, before but... it was called Roseville Arts. Yes. We used to be in the Heyman House. And before I remember that, that. We, were, we were in a um, Bank of America building. Yes, yeah. 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 So. Uh, the Heyman House had a yard attached to it. Yes. And I went to a jazz. I, I actually videotaped a jazz um, band 
in that yard. Really? Yeah. And we rented one of those cranes to so the camera's up in the crane. And I know the cameraman wanted to get up in the crane. <laughs> That's another reason why I don't like it. <laughs> so I went up in the crane. Here I am there holding the camera, and it's slowly descending. And I'm slowly doing a zoom. It was kind of fun. Yeah, that's how you get the perfect shot, right? Yep, the perfect shot. That's what you go for. Mm -hmm. oh, good. <laughs> so this is really good. So you're going to have this fun with filmmaking for kids. Yes. They're going to learn about cuts and you know dissolves and things like that. Mm -hmm. All good. And yep. then uh, the lottery for the arts, which adults can go to. Yes. Yeah. Will there be any eaty things there? Eat yes, to eat there will be hearty appetizers, beer, and wine. Oh, let um, it flow. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, is this something you've done every year? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Every year. Um, this is one of our fundraisers. We also have a charity poker tournament every fall. That's very fun. A poker tournament? Yes. Called All In for the Arts. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I was never good at cards. <laughs> my family, they're all one card players, but not me. I didn't <laughs> turn my cards over. Forget it. Well, but we'd still invite you. Okay, I could watch. Yeah. Yeah, I like to watch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating experience running an art center and uh, coming up with uh, creative ideas to serve the community. And uh, this uh, fun filmmaking uh, in project that uh, people can take part in is between March 28th and 30th. Mm -hmm. It's a three-day uh, workshop. Yeah, three-day workshop. Um, uh, it's for teenagers. It is, 13 to 18 year olds um, from any county, Placer County, Sacramento County, mm -hmm. and we do have scholarships available uh -huh. as well. Okay. Um, so anyone can apply online um, for 75 to 100 percent. Well, Mary Tess, that sounds like a wonderful service for uh, teenagers to learn how to do that because it's getting, t oh, there it is up there, technical. Oh, oh bluelinearts.org forward slash event forward slash. Okay, you can go to find that out there. <laughs> yeah, they can go Spring, to bluelinearts.org. Spring hyphen break fun hyphen <laughs> with film. <laughs> it's I was there. Like, What's their telephone number? I'm going to call them up. Blue line I. <laughs> I want my kid in there. We can get your kid in there. Yeah. So, okay, uh, I find it, it fascinating. And uh, have you done this filmmaking thing before? We have. We actually had it last year, but it was for 8 to 12-year-olds. Oh, oh. And oh. we were like, you know, it, it went really well. The kids had a lot of fun, but we're thinking this would be amazing for teenagers. Yeah, because they're on the cusp of being able to choose which direction they yes. might want to go to in college or on to, um, you know, some form of uh, education which... Uh, technical education which would put them into this thing called filmmaking you know it isn't just one person you know it's a team it's a team and you have to learn that it's a collaborative thing mm -hmm. and I'm not sure we have collabor collaboration 1a in grade school mm. well, I don't think we have it in high school except maybe basketball you know but that's like passing the ball okay so yeah whoa but doing <laughs> this creative thing with with making films has mm -hmm. to do with imagery yeah, and, definitely. And storytelling. Yeah, to have a vision and That's see it come to life. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what the, the students bring at the end of the, uh, the yeah. camp. And I think also the most important thing is also learning about human nature. I mean, you know, you yes, go in there and like, huge part. you think that there are some natural leaders in the group and there aren't. Like, what are we going to do now? <laughs> Someone has to step forward. Our instructor will be the perfect leader. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. of it. I'm sure of it. So it's, it's, it's great. I think it's, it's really good. Thank you. So you have, uh, you say you're the programs coordinator. That's kind of a catch-all title. It is. Tell me the programs. Nonprofits are usually catch-all kind oh, yeah, of right. organizations. Yeah, same but uh, programs, yes. Uh, art education programs, um, events. I also coordinate our internships and uh, volunteers. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, yeah. Volunteers, we can't, we uh, can't have anything going on without them. Yeah, so they're a huge sure. help. Yeah, absolutely right. Yep. Mm. <laughs> so... Um, the the Blue Line Arts Organization, is that city funded as well? Um, partly. We uh -huh. have a lot of different um, uh, funders. Um, we get our money through grants mm. as well as um, partnerships with different businesses uh -huh. and um, sponsorships for our events as well. So great way to um, have local businesses get involved and get their name out there too. Sure. You know, Roseville is kind of like... Uh, it's a, like a, a little kind of, uh, used, to, used to be a small town, 
way out there from Sac Sacramento. Yeah. Now it's kind of the megalopolis. Yes. You know? But it still retains this small town feeling. It does. When you go in it. Yep, it still has its small town charm, and um, Old Town Roseville has had um, some resurgence in, um, you know, their businesses down there too. Oh, and yeah, um, yeah working on, um, yeah, improving Main Street, it looks great. So I'm sure of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure of it. There's a, there's a lot of other things down there, antique stores and the like. Antique stores. So they could, yep. You could actually visit Blue uh, Blue Line. And when is this? Uh, uh, April fifth. Well, that's coming up pretty soon. It is, yeah. It's Thursday, April 5th from uh, 6 to 8.30 p.m. That's when um, the lottery for the arts is happening. Yes, but um, anyone who wants to come down and see the show, our gallery hours are Tuesdays and Thursdays mm -hmm. from 11 to 5 p.m. and Wednesday, Friday, and Saturdays from 11 to 3. Wow. So they can come on in and, and check out the show and see if they'd like that's to... Great. Buy a ticket. Buy a ticket. Yes. Yeah, I think that's good. And that, that goes to help such events as the uh, filmmaking for kids, too. It does, yep. Direct funding goes into the scholarships and uh, programs for the future. For kids that can't afford it but probably have a potential talent, you know, and all they need is that time to go for that. So that that's the Blue Line Arts Lottery for the Arts on April 5th. And you can go and see the art beforehand. When is that? Yes, it's open right now. I see. Woo, let's go. Woo, let's go. Yep. And uh, the reception is actually this Saturday from 5 to 8.30 p.m. So we'll have beer, wine, light refreshments, and hands-on art activities as well. So anyone can come on by and, and see what we have and in the gallery. Yep. Well, I, well, I thanks so much for coming, <laughs> Mary Tess. It's, uh, it's a delight to talk to you, and it's a delight to uh, hear about Blue Line Arts because it's, it is... Um, it's, it is a, a place that um, is really responds to the needs of the community. Yeah, thank you. Which thank is, you so much for having you, me. Thank you, no, you all. Thank you for being you and doing what you're doing. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah, we're excited. So don't forget, folks, spring break camp. You know what that means, spring break? It means <laughs> your kid's got, not going to be around the house. Uh, yeah. And they would be taking film like, filmmaking lessons, mm -hmm. potential Spielbergs. Yes. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, thank you. All right. Whoa, we'll be back next week with other wonderful people like Mary Tess here. And uh, we'll be talking about what's happening in our community in the arts and social services. And so come back live at 5, live wire. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.